Hi, I'm Deborah from Deborah Adele's Craft Room. Today we're going to be painting a frog on a canteen gourd. I hope you enjoy the video. These are the products that we'll be using for this project. They are Americana Acrylic Paint by DecoArt. The colors are Forest Green, Hauser Medium Green, Santa Red, Lamp Black, Light Buttermilk, Light Cinnamon, and in the Dazzling Metallics, Emperor's Gold. We'll also be using DuraClear Gloss Varnish when the project is complete. The first thing I did was I painted this gourd with two coats of Hauser Medium Green. Then you look for the best side of the gourd, which I want to be the high side of the gourd here. This has got more depth on the, this has got more depth here than over here. And I need a little bit of room for the, for the mouth. So. Next thing I'm gonna do is drill two holes in the top of the gourd. I hope I drill these in the right place. I've also drilled some holes in this wooden ball. This this wooden ball has a, a hole in it that's you stick the top of a clothespin in to make clothespin dolls and that gives you a flat surface and it's really good to have a flat surface for this. If you have another ball with no hole in it you'll have to sand it flat so that it has a surface about this big, sanded flat. Okay. All right. Those are the frog's eyes. We'll just let them dry a little bit while we do some other things. I'm gonna put a circle in the bottom of the belly See that one? That's going to be the belly of the frog, and we're going to paint that a lighter color green. I'm painting the belly with celery green. When you paint this <clears throat> circle here, paint it so that it just starts to go past the curve 
of the gourd like this so that when it sits down on a shelf or something somebody can just start to see that its belly is showing. Okay, I got the belly painted. You see how you can see it a little bit when it's sitting like this? So, now I'm going to paint the eyes. I'm just going to paint them green. I'm not going to do the details yet. Painting the eyes, hauser medium green, like the body. This one seems a little wiggly. Okay, now it probably has to stiffen up a little bit. I got the eyes painted, glued and painted, the belly's on, and I'm going to draw a mouth. Okay, I'm going to start way past the eye, and I'll put it right in the center of the height of the gourd, because this whole thing this whole section is the frog's face. I'm putting the open part of the mouth off to the side so it looks like he's saying ribbit. To me, that looks like he's saying ribbit, so that's why I'm doing that. Okay, now we're going to line the mouth. I'm giving these, these uh, eyes a chance to dry before I line them, or before I paint them, I'm sorry. So you have to thin out the paint with a little water. And follow the pencil line with your brush.
gonna put a tongue in there. Well, no, first I'm gonna do the smile line. I'm gonna draw the tongue on. I wasn't gonna do, I was gonna do like a human looking tongue, but I think I'm gonna do a frog tongue. I don't really know what they look like, but I'm guessing they come out like this. And I'm going to put that little top on there. I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, I don't know if it's that pointy. I'm going to make it a little more rounded. I have to decide what color to paint it. Well, I guess I'll paint it red because this isn't a real frog, so that will be okay. Okay, I think I'm going to look on the internet and see what a real frog's tongue looks like because <laughs> I'm wondering about this one. Okay, I looked online and this is pretty close to what a frog tongue looks like. Just spreading it out a little bit on the bottom. Make the connection a little bigger. There we go. I'm gonna darken it up a little. Put another coat on. Probably should have painted it white first. But I didn't, so. I'm going to paint a little fly on the end of his tongue. I think I will Let's see. I guess it'll have to be a black fly. And little white wings. So the fly is going to be a dip dot. Because I don't want to make it look like, you know, I don't want it to have a face or anything. Because that would be a lot of work. Tiny work. And my tiny brushes are needing to be replaced. So, where? Oh, where? Here it is. Here is a, one of my brushes that has a nice, beautiful end on it. And I'm going to put this little fly on here, on his end of his tongue. Oh, won't that be cute? And after that dries, I'll put some wings on. So right now, I'm going to sketch the eyes. So, not really sure how to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. 
going to have an eyelid. I'll show you just a second. And it's going to come down. And I think it's going to come around the bottom without hitting the bottom. It's like I'm drawing a sort of an oval on his eye. Let me look at that. See if it's wide enough. No, it's not. It should come around a little more here. And around here more. Okay, now let's look at it. Okay. Looks pretty good. Let me do another one. to come around more. Maybe I don't know a little higher here. I think that'll be okay. There's some little, we'll probably be able to tell if it needs a little more rounding or whatever after it's painted. So now I'm going to paint it white. There's not going to be much white showing on his eyes, but I like the idea of the white underneath everything, so depending on what color I select. It'll have white underneath it. Okay, now. I usually paint eyes right on the gourd when I do a frog. Of course, I haven't done a frog in years since I was a painter for craft shows. But this gourd was just a little bit too flat to put a, a mouth and the eyes together on it. Now that spider, if I was to make that one into a frog, that one would have worked because obviously it did work because it's got spider eyes and a mouth on it. But when you got two wooden balls just burning a hole in your pocket waiting to become something, that's what you do. You make a frog. Okay, I'm going to wait for these to dry before I put a second coat on. And I also have to check to see if they're the same size because they might not be. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the wings on this fly that I'm making. 
I'm going to mix some thinned out white. And <clears throat> this is not going to look anything like a fly. Okay, so putting one little wing on. This is thinned out, but it's not as thin as it's going to need to be later. Okay, look at that. Wings are the same size. Oh, Lordy. How lucky can you get? Okay. That shouldn't take very long to dry because it's just thinned out paint. Okay. Now I'm going to make it even thinner, like milk with water mixed in it. Okay. Now I'm going to color these in. This is just like doing the Santa glasses. There you go. There's our fly. I think since he's big enough, I think I'll put a couple of little eyes on him. I'm not going to use the back of a pencil. I'm not going to use the back of a paintbrush. I'm going to use the point of a liner. <clears throat> there we go. And when that dries, I'm going to put some black over the top of it. Okay. Well, I think that looks very cute. Pretty funny. Okay, now back to the eyes. And I wonder if I should have done these off the gourd or not. So you can do that, so you know, because sometimes certain angles are a little harder to reach. And we don't want you to hate painting when you get done watching my videos. We want you to love it. Okay. Well, he does look like a frog, doesn't he? Let's see. Those eyes are okay. All right. I see that these bee wings, no, fly wings, did not uh, get as dark as I expected. So I'm going to put a little more. I'm going to put a second coat of that milky color paint on top of them. And that should darken them up sufficiently. There we go. If this little fly was a little bigger, I would probably put little lines, little vein marks in his wings. But I don't think that uh, I don't think that 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 will work because they're so small. Now I'm going to put the dots on the insides of his whites. There we go. Because he looks like a fly caught in headlights here. But there you go. Isn't that better? That's better, I think. Let me look closer. Need a little more on this one. Oh. There we go. I guess that's okay now. You can hardly see it. 
it's okay. Okay. Now I'm going to put another coat of red on top of the uh, tongue because it's not covering up as well as it should. You could put white under it. And it would be a better idea. Now, because the eyes are still drying and I have to draw on them instead of just paint, I'm going to start with the frog dots. Get your pencil out and it's kind of like a, a giraffe spot. Just, you know, willy-nilly make a spot. I'm going to do one in here. Let's see if I can see the other side here. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Okay. There's another spot here. I missed the point, but that's okay. Okay, there we go. Now, another one. But we're not going to go on to the stem. We'll just go around the stem because otherwise, I don't know, it might not, it might look wonky. Okay, another dot over here. You didn't think we're going to just paint a face on a frog, did you? Okay, what you do is you get to this point, there's two here, put one like in between those two, but down lower, of course. Okay, and here's another spot for one, right here, in the back. And the lovely part about this is you can make them fit perfectly because it's just a pencil. Now I'm going to put one over here, smaller, okay, can you see that okay? Let me see if I can see it, yeah there, you can see that okay. Now I'm going to put one over here and start going under the mouth a little. couple in the front. In front of the eyes. Now where else? Let's do it kind of close together. Put another little one in this little spot back here. There's a little spot. I feel like I'm half blind here with this lighting. Okay, now a little triangle one here. Okay, now underneath the 
mouth over here, the little one. I got everything pretty well. Okay, I do have everything. And now I have to decide what color I'm going to paint these. And it's probably going to be forest green. Because I think evergreen is just too dark. Oh, we'll need a couple on the eyes, so... What these should be is like organized chaos. Maybe you people who do mosaic will probably do all right with it. piecing the pieces in. Okay, so now we're going to start painting the dots, the spots. Get a nice flat brush, one that has sharp edges so you can go up against the thing without having to suffer too much. There we go. Let's see. And as long as you get sharp edges and the graphite is covered, you shouldn't have to touch it up. Okay, there's one dot. Looks pretty good. Very easy to paint these dots. In order to get a nice sharp edge when you're painting on something that has a side on it, you get some paint on your brush and you kind of angle your brush so that the paint heads out to the edge. And then when you get out there, you just draw the paint along. If you have enough paint on and you don't push too hard, you'll have a nice edge. But if you don't have enough paint on, it'll be dry. The edge will be dry and it won't. It won't fill in the in the space properly, and you have to do it again, and then you'll probably have to touch up. Three dots done. The frogs I used to make were ornaments, <laughs> so this has taken a lot more time to do those dots than before.
Okay, I have our polka dotted frog here. And I just have to touch up one little spot that's a fingerprint. That's the wrong color. Well, here we go, this one. to find it. It's over here, I think. Yeah, here it is. Okay. I hope it doesn't look too corny. spot right here is too far from the other spot so I'm going to extend it. Okay. Okay. Now you're going to hate to hear this but we're going to have to line all these spots. This is an overnighter kind of job where you wake up the next morning and work on it some more. Okay, now we gotta line the belly. Now I'm going to <clears throat> draw the eyes, some lines in there for the frog eyes. I don't know if frogs have whites in their eyes, but these are, this frog is going to have whites in his eyes. You see how I did that? Drew a line on each side. The eyes are a little wiggly, they feel like, but I think that's just because there's some air space there where the toothpick is not in wood, it's just in sitting out there. Okay. Now I'm going to pick a color for these eyes. Let's see what I got here. I'm going to use light cinnamon for the eyes.
I'm going to shade these spots. with black. Okay. Now we have to shade again. We have to shade all of the spots with gold. Here it is, right here. Yeah, I have one of them done already. You don't shade around the whole thing. You just shade around one part of it, the front of it. You don't shade around the back side. I mean, you can if you want to, but I don't usually do it that way. There's that one's done. I'm going to shade the belly. With Hauser medium green. It's the same color as the body. I am lining the tongue. It seems to kind of disappear into that green. Okay, I lined the tongue and I put a little bit of gold in it. I don't know if I like it, but it's okay for right now. Now I'm going to start working on the eyes. First I'm going to line all the colors. The white, the brown, all the way around. Okay, I've lined the eyes, touched them up, and now we're going to shade the brown 
with black. Okay, I went around the whole eye with the black. I'll do the other one. going to draw in the pupils. I made long pupils, like cat eye pupils, for the frog, and we're going to paint these black now. He looks a little cockeyed. <laughs> okay, whatever. Now I'll do the other one. Now we're going to shade the outside of the pupils with gold. There you have it. The frog is very nearly done. The only thing left to do is the legs. I'll be doing the legs with pipe cleaners and paper beads. There it is. I tried to find some wooden beads that were long and shaped like an oval, long, long oval but I couldn't find any, so I have to make them. Okay, that's it. The frog is, the frog is painted. The frog is varnished. I have not drilled holes yet for the legs. I just wanted to make them first, make the legs first to see how they would look so I know where to put them. I'm gonna set this aside and show you what I have. Here, I have a foot that I made out of polymer clay. It doesn't look anything like a frog foot, I don't think, except for it has toes on it. And I have some paper beads. These were the same color as the spots, so I didn't have to paint them, but these were kind of an olive green and I painted them the same color as the background color of the frog. And then I have some little gold beads to put in between the beads that also accents the, the gold shading on the frog. So what I did is I got some of these my daughter got these for me, and she asked if these bumpy ones are okay because she didn't have any of the, you know, plain ones. And I said yes. So I tried to slide the uh, gold beads on it. Now th these other beads, they went down fine onto this, onto this uh, fluffy stuff here. But the gold bead wouldn't go past this point because it was just too much fluff. And so what I did was I, let me get something to keep this, my newly cleaned table clean. Okay, I got a pair of scissors and I cut the fluff off. And it worked out fine. Okay, I left the fluff on one end of these. Well, not all of them, because I thought of it later. But I thought that this part could go into the frog and it would, this extra stuff would keep it from pulling back out again. So I cut the three, three puffs of fluff off. And then 
I for the back legs I put uh, a gold bead and then the dark green and then gold and then the Hauser green so this is where it bends for the leg and I didn't have enough of these green beads to just alternate all the way down so I just put one in the beginning and one in the middle of the second section and then what I did and I can show you here on my other frog feet here I have frog feet here what I did when I made these I should tell you I shaped them like this and you know put the toes in it was not easy there's way better things probably maybe a wooden tulip or something that's flat you can cut the bottom off it or whatever would be a better frog foot and then I got one of those cap things that covers the top of a oh, what are they called liner brush and I pushed it in there and got the hole that way I made bigger ones for the back these are the back ones and I made the smaller ones for the front So, these are the front legs. I just had, I just have one dark one, and this I'm hoping is going to be the knee, and then it'll bend like that with a foot here. And I'm going to show you how I'm doing the foot. I have to find my clippers, wire cutters, and I'm going to put. This is the part that's going into, this part here is going into the frog. This here, I'm going to cut a piece off. So this maybe got an inch and a quarter left over. And I'm going to put this in like this, from the top of the foot down in. And I'm going to go around like that. And then bring it up around the foot. and wrap it get another pair of, get another pair of pliers here and you don't want that wire to be poking anyone because you know it will and you bend the wire down if you can Players are not helping me today. Okay, bend that up like that, and you have your frog, your frog leg, the front. This leg might be too long, so I'm going to check it out, and if it is, I will pull this out and switch this. I'll take this one off, put this one in between these two. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so that's how I did these legs. Paper bead. There are a lot of videos online for how to make paper beads. Most of them are really fancy. I'm going to try to make a paper bead video because someone asked me to. But um, it's not easy to get all my supplies out of the closet that it's in, buried in the closet. So I will do my best to get that done. I'm gonna drill about a third of the way up and kind of to the back of the you can't really drill these until the frog is made because you won't know where the holes should be I'm trying to look across now to see where it should go how high I'm hoping this works out all right because I hate patching painted gourds Now, if 
for the front legs. Wow, those are close. Okay, now with the big with the big feet, get this out of the way. I'm going to go in sideways so that the frog leg comes forward. Let me show you. Where's the hole? One, two, here. Okay. Okay. There's there's the back leg. It looks really stupid. No, it's no, it doesn't. It looks fine. Now here's the other back leg. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's too long. Okay, I forgot to take the extra bead off this one. There we go. Back we go into the gourd. <laughs> this will have to be a probably a ornament that you sit on your shelf or something so that you can adjust the legs I don't know if they'll ever stay in place because they're so wiggly okay now here we go again with the front legs hope they work okay what I did was I took a bead off the leg because the front leg because it's too long and I switched these two so that this one was in the center I did it to both and of course because that gold bead was next to the fluff and I had to pull this off because the foot was on already I had to cut the fluff off so one I cut because it had it was long enough. The other one I cut the fluff off it. Like I did in the beginning. Okay, now get this in there. That's better. I think maybe even I think maybe even three beads is too long for this frog. I'm gonna do this, see what happens. There we go. That's way better. Okay. So, let's see. Take these these off. This uh, clay that I used for the feet was orange because I ran out of. I never had any green, and I ran out of you know the flesh color that, you know, it's basic. And let me get this down like this. Oh man, wrong way, wrong way. Okay, make sure your beads don't come apart. Like, so yeah, there's not fuzz showing through them. Oh my gosh. Goodness gracious. I really want to come up with a better way to do legs than this. But not today. And when I do come up with better legs, 
if I do come up with better legs, I'm going to want to, uh, I'll make another video, show you how it looks, or what I made them out of. Okay, there you go. A frog. I'm not going to glue these legs. Because I'm going to want to change them, I know I am, so. But for now, if you come up with anything better, please let me know. It's always hard to attach something to a gourd. There you go. Cute frog. Wonky legs. There's got to be a better way to do this. Small canteen gourd made into a frog. Paper beads and clay. Wooden balls. These were not hard to add because you can peg them with a toothpick. But anyway, here you go. Here's our here's our frog. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And hit the bell so that you'll be notified of future videos. I hope you like this frog. He's cute, except the legs are crazy. <laughs> it is kind of cute. <laughs> now that I'm looking from behind instead of in the camera. Let's see. Straighten this out. Straighten this out. Okay. When um, I made these before, they were big, and my husband cut feet out of a uh, a big wooden heart. He just I just would draw the lines on, and he would cut them for me instead of making these funny things with clay. And then because the gourd was so big, it was like twice the size of this. I would use those wooden beads from. Uh, those seats that you put in your car. I, somebody gave me one. It was all broken and I just took all the, the uh, string out of it. And I used those beads for a lot of things. Anyway, but those beads weren't too big for the frogs because the frogs were so big. Anyway, there you go. A frog. A funny frog. Look at he's looking right at you. <laughs> Scaring me. <laughs>